It's my pleasure to uh, introduce Torben Kafkov. He's going to be talking about Tapasco on Versa, uh, AI, QDMA, streaming, and Mr. Mac. So Torben is a fourth-year PhD student at the Embedded Systems and Applications Group in TU Darmstadt. His research focuses on programming models and data management for FPGA in the HPC context. Thanks for the invitation and um, the uh, introduction. And welcome to my talk. Um, this talk is based on our publication at Award 2024, where we won the Best Paper Award. So, um, yeah, as we have uh, heard in the previous talk, um, AI is everywhere nowadays. Um, also, generative AI services are um, available. So you could want to use one of these services, um, prompt compute server with hot source then this service will do some inference and you get an image um, like that. So um, these inference task uh, yeah, requires lots of uh, computing power. And here the goal is to have a low latency and also yeah, as low power consumption as possible. Um, currently, everyone is using GPUs. Uh, they provide um, very high performance. They are easy to use um, due to existing uh, programming uh, frameworks. Uh, they can be programmed in software and they have um, quite short development times. On the other hand, we have uh, FPGAs. They are quite hard to use for programmers coming from the uh, software programming world. You, often need an HDL or at least knowledge in some HLS uh, tools. You achieve um, relative low frequencies, a couple of hundred megahertz, and you have low performance for the very important Mac operations. However, FPGAs provide very low latency and have a very uh, flexible architecture. Um, now we have the new AMD Aversal generation, which have a heterogeneous system already on the card. They combine the FPGA uh, with the uh, AI engines. These are software programmable, so it's, um, they are easier to pre program than an FPGA. And so AMD promises to combine low latency and the flexibility of FPGAs with a higher compute performance. Before I go more into detail uh, on the uh, Wersel architecture, I want to um, present our Tapasco framework to you. So Tapasco is developed for a few years now at our group, and it's desired to integrate FPGA-based accelerators into different heterogeneous compute um, systems. And we have on the one side a tool flow to yeah, build a bitstream around custom provided hardware accelerators. We call them uh, processing elements or short PEs uh, in Tapasco. And then we also uh, provide a platform independent software API to include these uh, accelerators into a host application and uh, dispatch compute tasks to the FPGA. Um, and we provide a Rust and C++ API. And today's focus of this talk is on the uh, streaming infrastructure we added for the uh, Wersel boards, which includes um, yeah, DMA streaming for PCI Express transfers and using AI engines with IO streams and um, 100 gigabit Ethernet for communication. Um, this is how the existing hardware tool flow of Tapasco looks like. You can either provide your um, yeah, PE as HLS C, C++ kernels or directly as an HDL core. Um, in the case you provide HLS kernels, Tapasco performs the HLS so that um, we have IP exact IP cores, um, which can then be used to build the Tapasco FPGA design, where we basically add a shell around the um, PEs, including DMA engine, interrupt controller, and similar. And then Tapasco use a Vivado um, yeah, to generate the device bitstream. A compose um, command could look like this. Um, you provide the PEs you want to have in your design. You say how many of each PE you want to have, then state the clock frequency the PEs should be clocked with and which platform of the um, yeah, supported platforms you want to have. Um, also, our um, software API is very simple. 
So you start to initialize your Tapasco FPGA device object. Um, then you usually want to have some data buffers as input or output for your um, accelerator. So you, for example, use a standard vector and then use the make grab pointer call to yeah, say to Tapasco uh, the data, where the data is lying and how much data you want to transfer. This uh, wrap pointer you then pass to the Tapasco launch call um, together with the um, kernel ID you want to use. And then Tapasco will handle the uh, data transfers to the device memory and start your um, PE. Then you uh, wait for the PE to finish. And also here Tapasco will automatically handle the um, device transfers back to host memory as requested. Um, now I want to yeah, give some more details on the AMD Versal chip architecture. So here you see the VC1902 Versal SOC, where we have some programmable logic on it and also um, off-chip DRAM. Then on this SOC, there's a network on chip, which connects um, all different components. And this is hardwired for a high performance access um, in your SOC. You can then place your PEs in the um, programmable logic part and connect to the uh, NOC so the PEs can access data in off-chip DRAM. Also, the AI engines uh, are connected to the NOC and some peripherals uh, for communication like PCI Express and um, 100 gigabit Ethernet. Also here, the um, QDMA core is provided as hard IP, so you do not have to place a DMA engine in your uh, programmable logic part. So you could use now this platform in the, I would say, conventional way for hardware accelerators. So in a memory map way, you first copy data from host memory into your off-chip DRAM. Then your uh, PE can read data from DRAM, process the data, writes then the results back. And finally, your DMA engine moves data back to host memory. However, what we want to push with our um, framework is that you use streaming also for DMA. So you directly stream the data from the DA, DMA engine into your PE, process the data and stream the results back to host memory without um, having the intermediate step over off-chip DRAM. Um, this matches quite well with the other components. It's also um, easy to stream data from programmable logic into the AI engines. And also um, network communication is streaming based uh, by nature. Um, so the um, AI engines are an array of uh, VLIW compute elements, also called tiles, and they provide um, each tile provides a scalar and a simply vector processor. Uh, they are clocked at 1.25 gigahertz, uh, so they are much uh, faster clocked than um, usually FPGA designs. On the VCK 5000, you then have up to 145 and 8 tera ops. And um, you program these AI engines using a so called AI engine graph, which uh, consists of many C um, kernels, which are then mapped to the tiles. You usually use the SDK for VITES to um, yeah, generate these graphs. As a side note, on uh, ARC24, we have presented GraphToy, which is a fast software simulation for such uh, graphs. The um, most efficient way then to get data in and out of the AI engines is um, to use streaming communication or the PLIO ports. You can also um, access a global memory um, using uh, the GMIO, but uh, you cannot achieve the same bandwidth with uh, the PLIOs. Um, as already said, you um, program the AI engines by building an, a graph. So you have three different uh, kernels uh, in this example. Then you specify how these kernels uh, are connected. So you either use um, window buffers between those kernels for data communication, or you can also use direct streams. And then to get data in and out of your kernels, you use the uh, PLIO ports. Um, connected to the programmable logic. This, um, these kernels and this graph description is then uh, thrown into the AI engine compiler, which um, yeah, produces a libadf.a file. If you now use the existing vendor flow um, in Vitus, you throw this libadf file and your IP course into V++, 
and then you get your device a bitstream out. Um, now using Tapasco is similar. So you also have your IP course and uh, the libadf file as input. And then um, use Tapasco to generate the FPGA design. But at this point, you can now specify additional features of Tapasco, like network or like stre DMA streaming um, to be also included in your FPGA design. Tapasco will then use um, Vivado to generate the device bit stream. So Vitus is not um, required. And we believe that this gives you a much higher flexibility in your design. Um, and more options of combining the different features of uh, the Versal platform. The uh, Compose command would now look a little bit uh, more complex. I come back to this later to show you a quite easy way to specify a more complex design. Um, if you now want to use the uh, DMA streaming feature of Tapasco, your host software looks almost the same. Instead of the make wrapped pointer call, you now uh, use the make input and make output stream calls, and Tafasco will handle your uh, data streams automatically. Um, so our vision of an application in such a uh, streaming-based setup is that you, of course, have um, some kind of main application running on your host CPU, placing data in host memory. Then you use the QDMA streaming feature to uh, stream the data from host memory directly into your accelerator, so no intermediate copies to any other memory. You may require a second FPGA board um, for your application, so you can stream my, uh, intermediate results over Ethernet to the next board where you may use the AI engines or not. And your final results are then streamed back to host memory so that your main application can utilize uh, this data, this results. In our publication, uh, we did a case study on a yeah, quite simple feed-forward neural network. So we had a four-layer network with a ton H activation function. And as CPU baseline, we had a simple NumPy implementation. Here you can see um, the layout of our neural network. And to showcase our dis distributed um, case, we partitioned then this neural network between two FPGAs. So we had um, three different versions of our application we compare in our evaluation. The first is the conventional memory mapped way, where we use XRT and the Tapasco in a memory mapped way. So we first move data from host to off-chip uh, DRAM. Then we have a PL kernel, which fetches data from DRAM, streams it into the AI engines, and then the results are streamed back, uh, written back to uh, the off-chip DRAM and then uh, moved to host memory by the DMA engine. Then in the second uh, version, we uh, use uh, the uh, DMA streaming feature. So we are still on one card, um, stream data directly from host memory into the AI engines and the results back to host memory without intermediate copies. And then in our third version, we um, combine streaming with um, uh, two cards and an Ethernet connection. So we move data, stream data from host memory into the AI engines, then um, copy or uh, stream the intermediate results over Ethernet to the second FPGA, and um, then the results back to host memory. So here, each uh, AI engine array handles two layers of our neural network, but uh, we now could instantiate our um, network two times in parallel. And our, our evaluation setup, we use an AMD 24 core processor as toast. CPU, uh, we had two VCK 5000 boards. And for comparison, we also used an NVIDIA A100 GPU. Um, so our input is uh, consists of samples of 64 floats uh, with uh, 32 samples in one batch. And then we yeah, evaluate from 16 kilobyte to one gigabyte of input data. And very important to say, our runtimes always include data transfers if required from host to a device memory and back. So um, as already said, our baseline was a very simple NumPy implementation. If we now use Keras um, on the CPU, we already have, of course, some speed up over NumPy, almost up to 20x. 
Then if we um, use XRT, we see that we only have in some cases really speed up um, compared to Keras on the CPU. In some cases, we are even uh, still slower. But if we use Tapasco in a memory map way, we already have a speed up above a Keras uh, for all a number of samples. If we now add uh, the streaming capabilities of Tapasco, we see we have even more uh, speed up, almost 2x more speed up than Tapasco in a memory map way. And of course, if we now scale out to two FPGAs, we just have more computation power and achieve the highest speed ups. If we now um, compare to Keras on a GPU, we see that um, in most cases, our Tapasco streaming variant on one um, card is uh, faster than the GPU. Only in a few cases, the GPU is a little bit faster. Um, yeah, in addition to the speed ups I already mentioned, we see that we have with our Tapasco streaming variant um, much lower jitter in our um, run times than with Tapasco memory map and also with XRT. So we have more deterministic run times and we have a lower power consumption than the GPU, almost cutting the consumption into half. In a second case study we didn't uh, publish yet, uh, we used Vitis AI, which is the development stack for AI inference. It uses a DPU on the FPGA and AI engines as accelerator and usually builds up upon XRT. Here we substituted XRT by Tapasco in the Vitis AI runtime, and we could achieve significant higher frame rates for two of the provided examples. Um, yeah, without changing the examples itself, just changing the um, backend in the Vitis AI runtime. So the uh, remaining minutes uh, of my talk, I want to spend on a section to give you a little bit um, hands-on instructions. I will start with the control register layout for Tapasco PEs, give a short overview of the Tapasco commands, then present two projects from our examples repository to show you how to um, yeah, compose your FPGA design with Tapasco. And the control register layout is quite simple. Um, yeah, most important, you have your start register at address zero. If you write a, run, uh, write a one to this uh, register, you launch the PE. And if your PE has finished, um, it has to rise, erase an interrupt signal after completion. The other control registers are only for um, to be uh, to also handle HLS calls. Then at offset uh, one zero, you have your return uh, register for one return value. And then following the different uh, yeah, arguments you want to pass to your PE and they support up to 64 bit values. Um, so the first command you require if you want to um, compose your design with um, Tapasco is to import your PE, which has to be in the IP exact format with the Tapasco import call. You just uh, specify the path to your file. Um, then you can give a kernel ID to this uh, PE type and uh, say the platforms you want to import your PEs for. Um, these IP exec files, of course, can be um, also generated with Vitis HLS, but you can also use the HLS integration of Tapasco where you place your softs files and a kernel.json file with a description in a folder of our workspace. Um, you can see the examples if you down download our uh, Git and then just use the Tapasco HLS um, core to import your HLS PE. And then um, you can generate your composition and your bitstream using the Tapasco compose command as already shown previously on my slides or as um, an alternative, you can define a jobs file in JSON format, which is a little bit more convenient if it get uh, if your design gets more complex. I now want to show you two examples uh, of this jobs file uh, using some features of Tapasco. In this case, the networking feature. So we have a simple PE which reads data from off-chip memory and streams streams uh, the data via Ethernet to another FPGA, and it uses uh, standard AXI4 stream interfaces for the connections to the Ethernet interface. To um, specify your design composition, a JSON file uh, would look like this. I'll now go a little bit into more detail. So first you yeah, specify your overall uh, composition. You specify the design frequency your PEs should run with. You can say, um, you can give a list of platforms you want to build your design for. 
and then you specify the name and the number of PEs you want to have in your composition. You then, uh, then continue to specify uh, the features you want to include. Um, for example, here, SFP plus feature, that's the name for all networking um, capabilities in Tapasco. And then you set some uh, properties which may vary per feature, of course, but sometimes also uh, per platform. And then in the um, yeah, networking feature, you have to define the network port and the properties you want to use, especially which of the physical ports of your FPGA card. So in this example, the VCK5000 has two physical network ports. As this is zero indexed, by specifying a one, we would use the second port of the VCK. Um, you then map your PE interfaces to the network ports. Um, so in this case, um, here's you use the previously defined port name to specify which port you want to connect your PE to. And then it's important to have always an RX and TX uh, connection for every of your physical network ports. Um, now, a second example, I want to show you a PE which splits a data stream from the DMA engine and forwards the data into the AI engines. The AI engine graph then calculates a simple uh, vector norm. And here we have AXI4 stream interfaces for both the connections to DMA and uh, to the AI engines. Um, the JSON file looks a little bit more simple in this case. Um, let's concentrate on the feature description. So for the DMA streaming feature, you just have to um, yeah, specify the slave and master port you want to connect um, your DMA engine stream with uh, the interfaces of your PE. Currently, we only support one stream in each direction. So one stream from host to device and one stream back from device to host. Also, the AI engine feature is quite simple. Um, so you specify your, the path to your libADF file, and then you map the stream ports of your PE to the AI engine PLIOs. Here, it's important, important to notice the PLIO name is defined um, in your AI engine graph description. Um, so to conclude my talk, um, I presented to you um, the streaming-based features of um, our Tapasco framework for versatile devices, and I showcased you how you can combine the AI engines with the QDMA streaming and a 100 uh, gigabit Ethernet connection. Uh, we showed in our neural network case study that with our streaming feature, we can outperform the A100 uh, GPU. And I showed you two hands-on examples on how to use Tapasco. Please check out um, our uh, Tapasco GitHub and our example repository we're building at the moment. And if you have any more questions, you can ask them now or yeah, get in touch via email um, or other. Thank you for your attention.